what is up everybody welcome to another i guess uh sneaker talk i don't know what to call this little series i'll think of a name soon um but hopefully this is a lot faster than the last one um so as you know i had to i had to let a whole day go by because i was just so shocked so disappointed um the metallic ones obviously if you're watching this you're either familiar with this sneaker or you're a sneakerhead or you try to get some sneakers you didn't hit um like myself so i first tried to get the metallic ones at first i didn't want those but then you know it's a it's a classic colorway that mj wore himself so it was like all right let me try to get it that was one of the fastest l's that i ever took after choosing right at i was ready right at 10 o'clock right when 10 o'clock hit i put in my size check out and then for some reason for some reason sneakers sneakers always ask me for my phone number i don't understand why i don't know if it's a trick for for bots it always makes me have to put in my phone number or choose it or something and that takes just a little bit of extra more of a second that i must be too slow i don't know how many pairs of those they had but within six minutes i you know this is the first time that i actually just closed the app i said whatever i'll come back to it so i go to the trophy room send my email submission there come back at 1006 says you are not selected so all right so that was an easy out of tape because it's through Nike, you know, I it, I would hope that it's as random of a draw as, you know, it could be, I guess, you know, then everybody has the same chances. Nothing wrong with that. Go to trophy room. Something happens. I, get, I start getting people from back home from Chicago, people telling me that uh, their selection, they couldn't send an email or something. So, you know, I'm checking I start getting online and I see on their Instagram that they actually said they were going to reopen the drawing back up at, what was it, 1145, something like that. Um, so apparently you weren't supposed to resubmit if you had already submitted. Your thing would be disqualified, I guess, if you did. Me like a dummy, I didn't know that, but I put it in. I still don't think that had anything to do with it. I still don't think that that was the reason why I did wasn't selected. But as you know, I wasn't selected. I didn't hit on these, you know, and so it was two L's. But then, you know, I wanted to figure out then who got who got them, because if you don't know for the backstory is these um, a lot of people had them already. They didn't know if they were fakes, UAs, whatever you want to call them. Um nobody 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 knows what those were marcus jordan actually was trying to say that nike nike was they got stolen or people were giving them out in memphis which i thought was kind of stupid to do or say why why would you say that i don't know that's i don't think nike operates like that. i hope we don't operate like that um and i think he was just trying to cover his track so basically the basically what people are saying is he backdoored them uh, backdoor. If you don't know what that means, basically he get, he got them early and he was reselling them for way much more price, you know, to people, you know, before they released. And I didn't believe that at first, but then you saw people with multiple pairs, like hundreds and hundreds of pairs, you know, on flexing on Instagram and, and, and these are resellers. So obviously they paid some good money to get those. And then he came out and said that if they didn't have blue laces that said a rumor has it on it, um, they were fake. But I, I don't know. I seen people that he was friends with on his comments saying, I need them blue laces, which means that none of them really came with blue laces. And then on the box, they were saying 170. Apparently, they were going for 190, really. Anyways. Twitter is going crazy. You know, I'm watching YouTube video after YouTube video of people talking about it. Like no one, I could not find anybody that hit through the email, got selected. Nobody, nobody. So that's, I still haven't seen anybody come out and actually say, Hey, I got, I won. Look at my email. We don't know what it looks like. Nothing. 
I don't know too many people that actually hit that weren't early pairs. And early pairs, you just really never know if they're real or not. Uh, I don't know what they do in China, but they can produce the shoe really, really fast. It's it's kind of crazy. So you don't know if it's real or fake. Um, but, man, this makes people... I understand why people rather get fakes or UAs, whatever you want to call them. This is the reason why, like... This is what I talked about in my last video. It's the sneakerheads, the people who actually love it, who have their shoe, who want the shoe, don't care about reselling. I have a lot of shoes. I've had a lot of shoes. Um, and I've never once thought of, of, of selling a shoe, no matter how much money I needed, no matter how much money I spent. I never really thought of reselling a shoe. And it just it's crazy to me to think that that's, I mean, I get it. People make their living like that, but man, it sucks. It really, really sucks. It is nice. It is nice to be able to know that if you want a shoe, you would be able to get it. You just have to pay a lot of money. I get that. Like Jordan ones, uh, the, the Chicago, the breads. It's nice to know that if I really, really wanted a pair, I could pay, which is stupid, but I could pay like 2000 to $3,000 and get that shoe. But then it's like, why, why, why would I do that? Why would I, why would I pay that much? We got bills. I would rather invest that money somewhere else. So I'm all about trying to get for retail. If I do not get for retail, which hasn't happened a lot, I just pass on the shoe. And But that's crazy, you know? I miss the days of being able to walk into a store and, hey, let me get that shoe. As a kid, maybe most of the time or some of the time, they didn't have it. But I could go somewhere else and, and find my shoe and things wouldn't sell out. The Jordan 1 was not selling out, and I'm pretty sure if I read correctly, it went on sale very cheap, you know, and even when it first came out, it was very cheap. So to think that, one, the price is already jacked up high for an old shoe, you know, um, that's another thing. Some people at work call me old, and I'm like, I'm old, you're tr you're wearing the stuff that I was grown, I grew up with, you know, you're trying to wear what I wear or what I was wearing. So who's the real old one, you know? And that's the thing. People are paying thousand dollars for old technology, but they have a problem playing, paying 200 for a LeBron, you know, full price for a Paul George, stuff like that. But that's the thing. They don't want to pay the expensive stuff um, for, for retail, but they want to go and spend um resale money but anyways man i didn't want to make this video too too long because i actually think people won't watch it and i really want people to watch this i'm begging you i'm begging you. well first of all okay let me tell you what makes this shoe kind of cool i guess the reason why i wanted it one i don't have a chicago one never have had that that's one of the ones that's missing my collection i have multiple jordan ones but i do not have the bread or the Chicago, those are, if I got those somehow, I would probably stop sneaker shopping <laughs> and I wouldn't buy any sneakers because those are just my favorites, never got to get them and I need them. Um, but this story or the, the story that they put behind the shoe is actually pretty cool. So if you're not familiar with Michael Jordan, his history in 1985, um, he made it to his first All-Star game. He was a rookie, but of course he was at looked at as that flashy kid, that show-off kid who, you know, was dunking and 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 he he had just a different swagger to him. You know, he was in the dunk contest with his Jordan ones, and he had his chains, you know, out, and he had his his jump Nike jumpsuit. And a lot of the veterans that had been around the game for you know ten years or whatever, they didn't really appreciate that or like that that much. So apparently during the game, you know, and most rookies don't even make it to an all-star game, you know, as a rookie. So, you know, so the story goes that they froze him out um, and didn't pass on the ball. If you watch the Last Dance documentary, you know, he touched up on that a little bit. It was Isaiah Thomas, you know, Matt Johnson. No one, they didn't just didn't want to pass on the ball. Whether it's true or not, we don't know. So these shoes went with that story, the freeze out. So the, the trophy room, because... It's his son's store. If you're not familiar with that, I guess Marcus Jordan is actually um, Jordan's Michael Jordan's son. He owns a shoe store. Go figure, right? 
I guess it's nice. It's nice to be able to live off your father's legacy and just sell the shoes that, you know, I'm not saying he, he is a UCF grad here in Florida. Um, but I mean, would he be selling these shoes like that? If, you know, would Nike be doing collabs with him if it wasn't Jordan's son? Who knows? Um, so they kind of have like a frost tint to them. They come with like the all-star ticket, you know, mock-up. And they got some stars on the bottom versus like the red bottom of the Chicago. So it looks a lot like a Chicago one. If you're looking at that, it, it looks like that a lot. It's just kind of like a frosty look. Like, you know, when you wake up in the morning in a cold day, but not like the freezing days, but like 30 degrees and you got to scrape your window a little bit. That's what that's supposed to appear like. So it's the freeze out. So they're like the trophy, trophy room, Jordan one freeze outs, I guess you could call them. So that was kind of a cool story. You know, I like the way he presented it and, and Nike or Jordan, whoever you want to say, you know, how they created that whole little sto- backstory to it. And I thought that was cool. So would I have liked to get them? Of course. Am I going to pay resale? No, they're like $2,000. So with that being said, man, before I end this video, and the main thing that I wanted to get across this video, we have to stop this. We have to stop people buying multiple pairs. If you want to buy one or two, and you want to resell that for a couple hundred bucks, go do it. But if we keep buying the resellers, you know, and paying their prices, if you guys keep doing you guys, because I'm not, if you guys keep doing that, they're just going to keep doing it. You know, back then there was no internet. So you didn't need, there was no go app. There was no StockX, There was no eBay. Um, maybe that's what has hurt the sneaker game or the sneaker culture is the internet that's what i think because i can't just pick up my i couldn't just pick up my cell phone and go on an app and try to either sell a shoe or buy a shoe now that's simple take a picture boom you put a price on it what you want and it's out there before if i used the phone it was to call stores and say do you have this shoe do you have this shoe do you have the shoe that was it not to be selling not to be trying to make money off it i get it's a business too but if you want to own a business, just be just have a shoe store. Do what you need, do what you can to do that. That would be my dream to do is have a shoe store, own my own sneaker store, you know. Um, but anyway, so I'm telling you guys, please, we need to change this. You know, you have basic Jordans that are going that are 160, 170 and they're jacked up to five hundred dollars or more. You know, when when is enough going to be enough? Is this going to continue? Is this always going to be like this? And it's not, I don't blame Nike. You know, they make their amount of pairs. They sell them. They sell out. That's great. It's the people who buy the reset or if Marcus Jordan really did backdoor pairs. That's, that's crazy. That's really, really crazy, man. You're already making, I'm sure he's making money or profit somehow already just by releasing the shoes and having the shoes. And there's supposed to be 12,000 pairs. Who knows how much he really had himself? I don't I don't know. But it was crazy. A lot of people are upset. It's kind of funny at the same time because it's just a pair of sneakers. But again, if it's just a pair of sneakers, then why do you have to go to these great lengths to c- grab them and to try to resell them? And gosh, it's just frustrating, I guess. I would I, I maybe because I don't I'm not into that or thinking about doing that. So it's a little frustrating. But, you know, I think the only way that that can stop is if we put a stop to it and stop buying, stop doing the resale stuff. And let's let's knock these people out. Let's knock the company. Sorry, go. Sorry, StockX. But we need to. You guys have me wearing uh, Chuck 70s blazers and Air Forces. My feet are killing me. Thank you. Thank you guys for that, because that's all I want. I can. Those are really available. And even those resell for a lot. Also, another thing people people are resorting to either UAs different shoes or customs and that's what i had to do look i have my custom pair of chicago ones but the bottom is white and then these shoes that i painted over these shoes are going for like 500 dollars, and it was just a basic white all white pair with a little bit of black you know what i'm saying like i got them I paid like thirty dollars for them in my outlet. And and that's crazy. Think about that. Shoes sit, they go to outlets, and then people 
decide that they're going to be a different price. And this is what you get. But man, I'm going to end my video here. I just want to tell you guys again, we got to do something about these resellers. We got to stop buying. We got to, if you don't get for retail, man, just leave it at that. Leave it at that. The prices will go down maybe eventually. You should not have to pay more than 50 to to $100 over for a shoe. Keep that in mind, guys. Let's go forward, man. Let's change this sneaker culture. I'm, I'm a diehard um, sneakerhead. I come from a time of just walking in, getting my sneakers. That's how it should be. Let's get back to those days. It'll be for the better of all of us sneakerheads, man. I don't even know what to say. See, it's because it's just crazy to me. Everything that's going through ahead, the last day that what has happened, man. All right, man. I'm signing off. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.